Okay, this isn't exactly a blog, but it's just as useful as a blog. What makes a blog useful is that it's current stuff, and it's always being updated. So as you can see, the textual criticism debate is being updated frequently. And what I wanted to show you here at Evangelical Textual Criticism um, is that in this area, see where he's got links? all here. These are links to other blogs and other um, materials that relate to textual criticism. Dr. Decker's site is particularly easy to read, but so are the others. Okay, here's Trigellis. Trigellis is one of my all-time heroes. Trigellis and Tischendorf, I just love those guys. I can't wait to meet them in heaven. And then Tyndale House has done a lot of work on it. And here's your virtual manuscript room at, I think it's the University of Münster. Um, that, that's where you can see, uh, let's just go there now, so I won't be talking off the top of my head, where you can look at the manuscripts. Now, it's in German, but, you know, German looks a lot like Latin, and Latin looks a lot like English. You can figure out most of the words, okay? And then you can click to look at the different manuscripts, okay? Yeah, it's the University of Mun Münster. Okay, viewer mode, browse manuscripts, read manuscripts. What do I want to do? Let's uh, browse them. Oh, crud. Back. Because I don't know. Let's just read them. Hope he doesn't ask me which one because I don't know the abbreviations yet. Yeah, I have to. Okay, let's see if I... Ah, I got a drop down. All right, so let's look at P26. That's actually the name of the manuscript. I haven't memorized the names of the manuscript yet, okay? See? Look at this. This is a real biblical manuscript. This tells you how hard their work is. That's an actual photo. This is like a ruler along here. That's the manuscript, and you have to, I don't know, they don't offer, oh, there is a way, but I'm not sure how. To, oh, here we go. Image. Increase the image. See, that tells you the, the, the centimeters, okay? That's the manuscript of P, what is it, um, what did I say it was, P26? All right, that's the manuscript. See how faded it is? See how hard this is to read? That's what these guys do all day, is they look at this. This, is, this is, looks like it's on parchment, not parchment, but a papyrus. And they have to figure out what book of the Bible or what verses in the Bible that is. Okay? I mean, look how small it is. It's Romans 1, 9 through 16. And, and see, this is what they have to do. And then you see all those, those tears and everything that's missing? Isn't that awesome? And as you can see on the right-hand side, the part that's missing is in red. Or maybe the part that's, that's there is in red. And then... The rest of it is in, in black. I'd have to look at it real closely to know which is which. I've not been to this site before. Okay? But that's the kind of stuff that you've got here. All right? So let's go back and close. See? So you've got the virtual manuscript room. You can look at the, the manuscripts. And see and appreciate how much it took for you to get your Bible in your hands. That's why I'm making these videos. I want you to understand that there's an army of people constantly involved in this who are out to say the Bible's bad and out to say the Bible's good and, or who are just plain anal about the text. And they're constantly working on this stuff. Constantly. See, and here, here's some Bible logs. There's Pergamon, Lagos, Michael Homan. So... This should be like, if you wanted to one-stop shopping for stuff on textual criticism that's current, come here to Evangelical Textual Criticism. All right? If you want background material, the best organized websites that I've, that I've ever found is Fordham. I use it a lot. I love this site. This is getting into textual critical problems, problems of the source. 
All right, so here's resources for biblical studies, encyclopedia. Here's something about that Bart Ehrman wrote. And then, you know, different kinds of arguments and, you know, stuff. Copy of Codex Sinaiticus. Okay, that's what Tischendorf found. Okay, here's a, a Gospel of Mark. It's not the same one as, as what um, Daniel Wallace was talking about. See, in this video, this is another one. This is another Gospel of Mark that he's talking about here. Okay, but over here, it's talking about another one that we've got that you can look at. So these are all images of the text. And then here's somebody's invention of Q. All right. I've already gone through why that's a stupid approach. Um, here's their Gospel of Mark. And they're interested in Mark because they think Mark is closest to this hypothetical Q. And there's a movement, and I put it in my Mark playlist, to actually create one. And in English, we would call that a hoax. But they don't think it's a hoax. They think they're going back to the original. Okay, but here's Codex Sinaiticus, which is an original. This is one of the, the codices that, that the King James only people can't stand. What they don't understand is that a lot of what Erasmus' text has in the Textus Receptus is based on Codex Sinaiticus, which is earlier, like 4th century, okay, 5th century maybe, okay. Here's the case against Q. See, they're going pro and con. All right, here's a catalog of the papyri, much of which is on the LXX. I'm not sure if all the LXX is there. Okay. Um, we have LXX parchments, I mean papyri, which predate origin by at least 200 years. Okay, so much for the King James Only movement. Um, Gnostic texts, Dead Sea Scrolls. Nag Hammadi Library, you know, it's very, see how well organized it is? And what's kind of cool about Fordham is just one of the greatest sites on the internet. Okay, I use it frequently. See, you've got all these, these other materials that you can look at. Full text, legal text, you know, the laws that Constantine passed, they have full text of those laws, just like 4thCentury.com. Wonderful, wonderful website. Okay, in the next one, come in, I'm going to take you hopefully to some of the other heavy hitters. And okay, I'm having trouble finding the heavy hitters at the universities themselves. The links aren't easily found, but I did find this. I told you, Tregellis is one of my heroes. Now, <clears throat> Tischendorf is, was a Protestant. He found Codex Sinaiticus. Tregellis ended up examining um, Codex Vaticanus. And he had to memorize it, and then he published what he memorized, and that ended up, um, shall we say, inducing the Vatican to publish Codex, what we call Codex Vaticanus, in the late 1800s, very late 1800s. So Tregellis is one of my heroes. And he was a Catholic, loyal Catholic. All right. So here's how you can download what you know his own text. Okay. Now. See, he also produced an apparatus. And this is all available. You got TNT and TNT2. I think, I have to remember, I haven't looked at it. Um, I think if you have Bible Works 8, you get this. Or it's a module. I'm pretty sure I have it in my Bible Works 8, which I don't use that much except for the modules. Because um, I'm just used to Bible Works 5, so I like it better. But this is his critical edition, and he has an apparatus, see? And you can download it here at Tyndale House. I'll, a link will be in the sidebar on this. Isn't this cool? I'm just, oh. See, th when you know how many people have spent their lives, this guy spent his life. He, this was a, a lesser thing he did, actually, to compile his own Greek uh, New Testament critical edition. He spent all of his life, all of his adult life, as so far as I know, collating and finding other manuscripts. It's in large measure due to this guy, you can trust your Bible. And obviously he asked for it. He, you know, he got it, he got Vaticanus, you know, I, I want to say that was toward the end of his life, maybe not. Um, but he spent his life collating, you know, finding other manuscripts. 
and so did Tishnorf, but it was more Tregellis. And there's a whole list of Bible heroes. These are the people who will be the big heroes in heaven who did this. And they come from every denomination. So, you know, we all have to make criticisms of other doctrines and stuff, but the people, God did employ them in every denomination, so nobody's left out. Anyway, I'm going to close this segment here. You can use this to download his um, um, Greek New Testament and especially the apparatus. Okay? Signing off. Okay, this link will also be in the directory to the, web, the video description, Greek texts that are online, because as you start getting into textual criticism, you want to actually look at the, the texts in question. And you might not feel so comfortable looking at the virtual manuscript library because it's really hard to read those texts online unless you're used to it. So here's a list of some of them, okay, and where they are. Like this is the German Bible Society. That's the uh, NA, probably NA 27. It's also got the Septuagint, okay. And then you have several editions of the Greek NT. Here's, there's Lagos' own, but I think you have to pay them. Maybe you don't. Here's the SBL. Okay, that's published by Lagos also. There's NA26, which is an earlier version. Okay, uh, here's, here's a Byzantine text form. This is by Maurice Robinson. He's a primary proponent of Byzantine, you know, priority position. Okay, here's the full text of St Stefana Scrivener Westcott Ward. Here's Westcott Hort, here's Scrivener, here's Stephanos at Bible Gateway. Okay, Bible Gateway is a pretty good website. I've had the, the luck to see it. Uh, Super Donster makes his videos from Bible Gateway. And that's a really slick website. I'm going to have to investigate it more. Here's Interlinear. Okay, that looks like it might be Stephanos. I advocate Interlinears just like uh, Alexander Hamilton did. I have an interlinear of Alexander Hamilton's, um, you know, when he was still alive and publishing, um, a Latin interlinear, and it really helps to learn. You don't ever mistake an interlinear for smooth translation. A lot of scholars hate interlinears. They think it wrecks your brain. But if you're looking at it as a, as a contextual dictionary, just so that you get a sort of hands-on familiarity so that you can see the Latin word, in this my case Latin because I'm using Alexander Hamilton, the Latin word um, and the English word under it. At the same time, it helps your brain become familiar. The hardest thing about learning a language is to become familiar with the look and the sound of the word. Once you've got enough repetition with the look and the sound of the word, then you can get more fancy and get into things like semantic range and sentence structure and stuff. But you've got to get the alphabet, you've got to get the look of the letters, you've got to get the sound of the word in your mind first. Okay? And so if you just, you know, start looking at an interlinear, it's going to be, you know, you, you'll think you're not retaining anything, but you will. So here's an interlinear literal translation of the Greek New Testament. Again, if you have Bible works, you don't need most of this stuff, all right? Because Bible works has Westcott and Hort, it has Scribner, and it has Stephanos already. It also has Tischendorf, okay? And it has NA27 um, and UBS4, of course. NA27 is part of that. Um, UBS 4 is considered to be the main Greek text that's used today. All right. But not every single edition is the same. And who knows, maybe the new one's got a mistake in it. If so, you've got an army of people busy looking for it. Hey, kind idea. Theki means the New Testament. That's a Greek word for it. It's actually, this is a term for it that's used in Book of Hebrews, Chapter 9. Okay. This is the Greek text underlying the, the revised version of 1881 that caused so much, you know, political brouhaha when it came out. And then here's the emphatic diaglot. Some of these texts, you, this is the only place you can find them. Okay. Greenfield's annotated. And then where was the one by Griesbach? Here's Griesbach. Griesbach is considered one of the leaders in the field. He's been dead for a while. Um, so here's his annotated text. Here's volume one. In volume two, see the annotations kind of have a, a, some of, some effect like a uh, an apparatus, but they're a little more elaborate. Okay, 
then there's Weymouth's version. And I don't see the Webster. There's a Webster version also, but I don't see it here. Yeah, this is Good Acres. This is the BFBS of 1904. See, hey, Connie, do you think you again? All right, see, the, a lot of people could speak Greek a century ago. So everybody and his brother was busy putting them out, just like everybody and his brother today is putting out English Bibles. They were busy doing Greek composite editions a century ago because it was so common for people to understand the Greek. So the reason we don't is because we're lazy. All right. So the BFBS underlies the English Revised Edition of 1881. And then there's the Greek New Testament Gateway. That's Good Acre. So as you can see, and then here's some bunch of sites and textual criticism. All right. I'll let you look at this at your, la at your leisure. Obviously, some of them you'll have to be able to read German because the German scholars usually tend to um, be the most advanced. Not always, but often. Okay, I wish I had studied German instead of all the languages I studied. Okay, so as you can see, you've got a lot of material that you can look at here. And um, most of it's current. In other words, a lot of this stuff is current. Some of it's the old classical stuff, like this is 1939, Our Bible and the Ancient Manuscripts by Kenyon. Kenyon has uh, written an awful lot of books on textual criticism. And then here's Trigellus' own introduction. Okay, my hero. This guy's my hero. Anyway, signing off, you know, now have yet another place you can look at for TC. Thank you.